Let's talk about radial mapping and specifically apply to brick details. I was watching this uh, very interesting video by Paul Aubin on LinkedIn Learning about the topic and I'll put a link in the description, but I'll also show what he's showing in the video as well. But I thought I would uh, expand on the concept uh, just because this seemed to be a very interesting trick. Hi everyone, Alberti with BIM Lounge. Make sure you stay tuned for weekly BIM productivity videos. Now let's get to work. Now for this exercise, as you can see, I placed the before and after of both the arched window and the circle shaped window. Now let's um, tackle this first. So I'm going to edit the family. Now, the first thing you may want to do is figure out which one, which side is the exterior. And in this case, this is it for me. I would start from working on our sweep. So create sweep and I'm going to pick path. And what this is going to do is ensuring that this uh, sweep will be tied to the window size. So whenever you stretch it, the arch will follow it. Now we accept the path and let's go ahead and edit the profile. What I'd like to do here is just to keep things quick is to draw a rectangle. And in my case, I have an eight inch by for example one inch you can decide how much you want the that brick detail to stick out from your facade now at this point we're not done because what we want to do is accept the model and take a look at the detail there now we don't have a material signed yet so let's go ahead and look for the material so I already created this material because I'm not gonna lie it took me a few tries to to get this right to really understand it so I have this material ready if you're following with the files that I provide these are the measurements that should work and uh, I'm basically using um, 8 by 2.5 inch brick roughly and then I have a matching pattern, as you can see there. So let's go ahead and assign that. And you can see that the pattern is not following the shape of the arch. And so goes for the pattern. So let's go ahead and fix that. I like to work in realistic because I think it, it gives us that immediate feedback. Now, what's the trick here? If you want to make that pattern follow, let's go ahead and uh, edit the profile. And I always suggest modeling in a straight view. So if you go to the left view again. Now what we need to do here is make sure that this um, alignment is slanted. So not parallel to the facade, but slightly slanted of say about, and let's use the offset there of about one over 64 of an inch uh, or the equivalent in metric and create an offset of that line and now we want to connect that vertex right there with this one so I'm creating a diagonal line now I'm forcing the snap with the tap button so see it, it gives us a, it gives us a warning that's not going to be accurate but we know what we're doing so we can ignore that warning and now, of course, we can get rid of the straight lines, the two parallel straight lines. And now what we're left with is a diagonal line. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and accept. And there it is. Now, of course, the coursing may not be correct yet, but at least we know that the pattern is at least um, following the arched uh, profile. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and uh, figure out how to fix that because this is a, a parameter issue or I should say a material issue. Now, if you go ahead and uh, go back into the texture mapping here, it's um, possible that this dimension maybe, and you can uh, uh, do some trial and error here. It really depends on the type of texture that you're using and uh, the, the scale of, uh, of the project. Uh, let's try uh, minus 0.5 and as you can see that does it for me and um, 
I had to try this a few times. Uh, so you know, if you can't get it right the first time, don't get discouraged. It's really, it's really rewarding once you find the right um, parameters. Now, this is pretty much it because this. What's nice about it is that now you can uh, go ahead and flex the window. For example, if I set it to 60 inches, it will follow it. The the only thing you have to consider is that, of course, the amount of uh, bricks will uh, be tied to the the white the width of the of the window. So if you wanted to have this width and keep the scale of brick, you would have to essentially offset the path just a little bit, just so you can have, if not a whole brick, at least half, depending on your detail, I'd say a whole brick, just so you start with a whole brick and you finish with the whole brick. Now, as far as the fill pattern, let's go ahead and make sure that the whatever the texture is showing as mapping, the, the surface pattern follows it. So to do that, we can uh, click on texture, on texture alignment, and uh, see, it's kind of hard to see, but you should be able to center it, and uh, mine was almost there, but, and um, also you may want to consider uh, making sure that these dimensions are set, uh, set so that they're compatible with the texture that you're using. And also consider the mortar thickness as well. Very good. Now let's verify it. Great. So as you can see, now the two are in sync, uh, at least as far as the, the Y, the X, um, that hasn't been a problem, but you can adjust that as well. Now let's figure out how to work on the circle. For the circle, what I like to do is uh, reuse this texture because I already created it, the material is already there, so I don't want to show you that a second time. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we're back in the project. And by the way, this is uh, the result of what you would see if you loaded the file back in. Now, this is the plain window without the circle brick detail. Let's go ahead and edit that. Now, as I mentioned before, I copied the arch that I just uh, designed so let's go ahead and uh, paste it and uh, if you're only working on the circle obviously you can uh, recreate the the same parameters as I did in the for the arch window just applied straight to to the circle detail now I'm going to align this arch right there so I know it's um, on the facade. Now, I don't necessarily want to edit this geometry. I, I was just carrying this for the material itself. So I'm going, I'm going to create a new material. Sorry, a new sweep. And again, I will pick path so they stay in sync and parametric with the radius of the window. And now, of course, I want to go edit the profile. Now, the sketch is... Um, very much the same so you still want to do whatever you pick for your dimension the brick dimensions go ahead and apply something similar and then of course you want to you want to go ahead and offset this by 164 again work on your diagonal I'm gonna try to do this fast because we've already see it We've already seen it in action. Okay, so that works. Now that alignment can go, and now that's our that's the the top semicircle. Now what I want to do is copy this sketch, and you'll see why. For what I was able to tell, and let's go ahead and apply the same material to that. Perfect. Now let's get rid of that because we don't need it. What I was able to uh, see is that it's uh, it's much easier to handle this um, type of radial mapping with uh, semicircles instead of whole circles. Now I will go ahead and uh, create another sweep so I can pick a path 
And now when I edit the profile, I already have a geometry. So let's go ahead and go on the lower part and you see the profile has to go downward this time. So I'll go ahead and paste that sketch. And of course, we'll get the warnings, but again, we accept that. And uh, let's go ahead and mirror this without copying because we need the angle to be symmetrical at, compared to the other one. Now at this point we can accept that and uh, we may need to assign, yeah, we need to assign the material there. So at this point, let's fix the mapping on the Y axis. And to do that, let's go in back into the appearance. And uh, instead of that value, uh, let's do something like an inch in my case. And you can try a few things, but the nice thing is that the two semicircles, because they have the same material, they have now the same mapping and they respond to changes at the same time. So I, I say that's uh, acceptable. And uh, you may notice that maybe some uh, the, the, the point where the two semicircles meet may not have a whole uh, brick or whatever it is, it is your transition. And uh, it's obviously, depending on the size of the window. So you can either do the math or figure out what the ideal scale for that brick is. Usually you can't really change the scale, so you would change the, the window or you would slightly adjust the scale of the brick just uh, in terms of showing an overall look for that detail. And then of course in the field, they will get it right, no matter what the amount of bricks that you're showing in your drawings. This is just really for visualization. So I say I'm pretty happy with this. And of course I can load it back to the project. Great, so this method is not 100% accurate, but consider that for visualization, it's pretty effective if you consider uh, how uh, heavy modeling each individual brick and the mortar for each individual window is. So I'd say if the window size is set and uh, you don't have to struggle with the size of the arch, uh, I think it's actually more effective to leave this detail within the family rather than modeling each uh, of these elements in place. But it really depends on the project. This is, uh, I think, a good alternative if you know how to handle the scale and the size of the window. So of course, one of the great applications for this is whenever you have to visualize the project in um, software like uh, Enscape, for example, where you can walk the model and uh, having that realistic um, view, it's a great way to show the project without having to model each individual brick and the mortar. Questions? Let me know in the comments and also let me know what other applications you would use this for. And uh, also let me know if you'd want me to take a look at how to apply this uh, radio mapping process to other surfaces like floors. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.